Let us start with the preliminary homage to the Buddha. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Let us now pay respect to the Triple Gem. Arahang Sama Sambuddho Bhagava Buddhang Bhagavantang Abhivademi Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supatipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangang Namami Let us now go for the refuge to the Triple Gem. Buddha Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Dutiyang Pi Buddha Saranang Gachami Dutiyang pi dhammang saranang gachami Dutiyang pi sanggang saranang gachami Katiyang pi buddhang saranang gachami Katiyang pi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiang pi sanggang saranang gachami. We will now chant the observance of the five precepts. Panati pata veramani sika padang samadhyami. Adina dana veramani sika padang samadhyami Kamen sumi cacara veramani sika padang samadhyami Musawada veramani sika padang Samadhyami Surame Raya Majapamadatana Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Buddha. Iti Piso Bhagava Arahang Sama Sang Buddha, Vija Charana Sampano Sugato Lokavidu Anutaro Purisadama Sarati Satadeva Manusanang Buddha Bhagavati let us recollect the sublime qualities of Dhamma. Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehipasiko Openaiko Pachatang Vedita Bovi Nyuhiti 
Let us now recollect the sublime qualities of Sangha. Supati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ujupati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya Pati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Sami Chipati Pano Bhagavato Savaka Sango Yadidang Chatari Puri Sayugani Atta Puri Sapugala Esa Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakineyo Anjali Karaniyo Anuttara Punyaketa Loka Sati Sadu 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 Namo Buddhaya, my brothers and sisters, good morning. Yes, and today uh, I'd like to uh, lead a guided meditation for 10 minutes. And uh, yes, maybe three minutes, just uh, got a meditation and the seven minutes uh, we meditate together. So see if you can sit comfortably, feel at ease, let go of the past and the future. And abide in the present moment, which is always enjoyable to really abide in the present moment. And the, there are a few things that can help us to abide in the present moment. One of them is sound. See if you can be aware of the sound, external sound or internal sound. The object of sound appears and you're present. You don't have to make it happen. You don't have to, let, to reduce sound. You don't have to increase it, but you can be aware. So that keeps us in the present moment. Simply awareness of the sound. Another thing that can help us, uh, help us to, uh, to abide in the present moment is our body, the whole body sitting here. You don't have to figure out your body. It's here, right now. So see if you can pay attention to the body sitting here with all its touch sensations, wherever the body is touching. Sometimes the body is touching, you feel touch sensations, sometimes warmth, sometimes sometime coolness. The body sitting here, and the mind knows that the body is sitting here. So that also keeps us present. Another thing that keeps us present is the breath. As we're sitting here, the body is breathing, sound is happening. So see if you can pay attention to the breath, the breath body. Anchoring your attention wherever you feel the breath more distinctly at the nostrils. Maybe rise and fall. Whenever you pay attention, see if you can be aware from the beginning of in breath to the end of it. Beginning of out breath to the end of it. See if you can sustain your attention. And the breath also keeps us in the present moment because they are all the time. You don't have to make the breath longer or shorter, but you can be aware. Same with the body, same with the sound. So really this reminds us of the natural quality of mindfulness. It shows what's happening right now in the present moment, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but now you are abiding in the nowness. 
Yeah, no. Around it and centered. You can begin to expand our awareness to embrace whatever rising in the present moment. Maybe as you are with the breath, as your primary object of attention, maybe uh, other states of mind are rising. They say feelings, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Maybe it's emotions, delight, calmness. Maybe some unwholesome emotions are rising. Maybe fears are rising, maybe aversion is arising. These are thoughts that can happen remembering the past. Maybe it's thoughts arising, the thoughts about planning the future, remembering the past. Again, see if you can be mindful of your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, and sensations. Not all at the same time, but simply be aware or whatever is arising in the present moment, whenever it becomes prominent. If it becomes prominent, then the rest becomes the background. So the rest of the six minutes, we are just going to abide in the present moment, and be mindful of whatever is arising in the present moment.
May you be well, happy and peaceful. May your beings be well, happy and peaceful. If you can reflect along this line uh, before you end this meditation, reflect along these lines. May I be well, happy and peaceful. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. May I be free from suffering and its causes. May all beings be free from suffering and its causes. May I be well, happy and peaceful. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. Yes. Definitely. That's uh, 10 minutes already. So then, uh, what's the next one? Is uh, Dharma Talk. All right? So I just slide into the Dharma Talk now. So today's talk is freedom from fearlessness. Freedom from fear. Hmm? Freedom from fear. The Pali word for fear is called Baya, B-H-A-Y. And if you are not having fear, you are fearless, is called Abaya. We have even those names, Abaya Giri. <laughs> Giri is a mountain, so a mountain of fearlessness. Maybe. But also we used to have a monk at Bhavana Society, which is called Abaya Rata. Yes, the jewel of fearless. So now, uh, freedom from fear, it means we want to practice in a way that we overcome fear, which is an wholesome state of mind. Fear is an wholesome state of mind. And freedom, it means uh, we can have moment-to-moment freedom. In that moment, when we let go our fear, we feel freedom. We can have also uh, temporary freedom, whereby uh, in the next maybe, for instance, uh, two days, three days, four days, one year, uh, like that, we don't have fear also. Hmm? But the real freedom from fear completely uh, is when you have overcome the root of fear, which is craving. Once we, can, we overcome the root of, cra- uh, of fear, which is craving, then also fear goes out of the window. <laughs> so we can say that we have ultimately overcome fear in ultimate sense when we attain the third level of enlightenment. When we attain the third level of enlightenment, we, you know, we don't have desire. Mm-hmm. We don't have desire, and it's a, it's kind of cousins. <laughs> Then uh, we can say, yes, we have overcome, we are free from fear. But before that, we have to rely on our moment to moment, uh, when, uh, to some extent, when you are able to be mindful of it, then you don't have fear. And it comes back, it keeps on coming back. One moment you are, you are fearless, another moment you are, you are fear, like that. So it comes back and, back and forth so long as you can practice. And there is a practice there the Buddha gave in order to really overcome fear. Mm -hmm. So now, so fear is a mental state. So it's unwholesome, Uh, that's where it belongs. It belongs to us what to call akusala. Mm -hmm. It's akusala, unwholesome state of mind. And there are so many kinds of fear. Mm -hmm. So many kinds of fear, we are afraid of of so many things. Mm -hmm. We are afraid of uh, success. It's amazing, people are afraid of success. Why? Because success comes with responsibility. Can uh, I can say, okay, if you if want to be successful, become a president of the United States. Become a president of Uganda. <laughs> I don't know about that, but anyway. So people will say, no, I don't want to become a president. <laughs> Yet when they see the president, they say, wow, he's living a good life and, and having this and how. But when they say, okay, now become the president, <laughs> then that people are afraid to be, they are really afraid. Uh, president of this country, it's not easy, you know. You, you have a lot of responsibility. So most people will be afraid to be successful. Uh, 
But also most people are afraid to be to, 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 of failure. You know, nobody wants to fail. So now nobody wants to, uh, people are afraid of, to be successful. Uh, I mean, ultimate success, of course, is to attain uh, enlightenment. But I'm talking about this world success. People are afraid because uh, the always some duties and responsibility involved when you get a position like that. But most people, of course, they're afraid of, 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 of failure because when you fail, then you cannot function very well in life. Uh, people are afraid of... I'm just going to outline some kind of fears that we have. Fear of the unknown. Let's go to Uganda, Sister Eileen. Uh, Uganda? Where there is a chimpanzee? Oh. <laughs> and I know brother, brother Rudy said that in Uganda they have a chimpanzee. <laughs> Only gorillas, <laughs> mountain gorillas. So there's more that, that than mountain gorilla. But because we don't know, we have to pull out some kind of video clips to show what Uganda uh, look like. Idi Amin is not there then this and that. But most of the people, they don't know why they would be afraid to come to Uganda. It's not uh, really because of anything else, but because it's a big mystery out there and not so many uh, information come uh, to media. Uh, so then they, are, they don't know. So we are afraid of exams. We are afraid of, uh, there's so many things you can add, but you know, there's some kind of uh, also fear is called phobias. When you're afraid, afraid of heights, Crostovia, those actually uh, also are other kinds of fears. We call them phobias. Yeah, some are imagined, actually. They're just imagined. We just imagine that we, when I stand on a building, I'm going to fall, to fall down. Then you can, you, you have what we call phobias. So that's also very important to, to know. But as we're talking about fear, we have to really look at, is there fear that the Buddha encouraged us to have? The answer, yes. But that's not called fear. The a Buddha qualified it. It's called moral fear and moral dread. And he said that these are the two dhammas that protect the whole world. The whole world are protected by this kind of moral fear and moral dread. What are they? Uh, it's the, for instance, uh, of course, I, I, I tell you the Pali name, Hiri and Otapa. Hiri is to have moral fear about doing something out of self-respect. Let's say I'm giving an example. If you are to touch that, something that's eh, you say you have more fear of not touching those things because um, you have self-respect. Why you don't, you want you to see yourself clean and you don't want to be to be dirty. Hmm? So that would be out of respect. Uh, but the other, which is called uh, moral dread in Pali is called otapa. Otapa, it's a it's actually being uh, dreading the consequences of doing something. It's about the consequences. What are, that would be the, it's not, it's not, you really actually focus now on the consequences. What are going to be the results of doing something? So now the results of this is, let's say for instance, if you touch fire, if you touch fire, uh, it's going to burn you and you're going to suffer a lot. Hmm? This one will involve suffering definitely. <laughs> That's the repercussions. You, uh, you have pain and uh, you have to be rushed to the hospital and uh, other people are going to suffer because you touch the fire and they have to rush you to the hospital and both of you are going to suffer. So now when you look at being dreading those results, then you be afraid. Uh, in one book of Abhidhamma, they, they compare to, to this kind of fear to a stick. Uh, like if this is a stick, one side is fire, and one side is dirty. So if you are, uh, you have uh, moral dread of touching something dirty, then you have hiri. But if you have actually moral dread of touching the other side, which is fire, because it will burn you, then you have otapa. So it's the same stick, but on one side is dirty, on one side is fire. So the, the dirty part, you don't want to touch it because of hiri, respect for yourself. And for the other side, which has fire, you don't want to touch because of the consequences that are going to arise, and that's otapa, hmm? moral dread. So these are actually, Buddha say that without that, then the world will do whatever they want. There will be all sorts of evil. So both of them are very important. Respect for others, 
respect for oneself. And uh, the Buddha called uh, call them uh, the, the two Dharma, Loka Dharma. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Then that, the, the two the Dhammas that protect the world, hmm? the, pro, the, 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 the Dhamma in the world, that it protects it. Hmm? So now let's see uh, uh, what you call uh, other kind of fear. We've seen, okay. We can now divide them into three, actually, conveniently. We talked about phobia. This is more imagined. We talk about emotions. That, uh, and so we talk about that kind of uh, fear, which is uh, uh, what we call and Otapa. That one we need to cultivate. In fact, in many ways, that's why we are able to protect the precepts. Because when we, we, we have the five precepts at the minimum, we, we don't want to break them. Because we know, let's say, if we steal, what will happen? They will take us to the prison. What are the what are the re repercussions of uh, of maybe drinking? And you you break all the precepts, you do whatever you want, and now you have to suffer. So these are things we have to know. Yes, uh, when you really know the different kinds of what helps, and you can really look at what are your fears in life. Are you afraid of the this and that. So then it's good to know what's your fears. For me, actually, my greatest fear was, uh, well, as I was growing up, is was water. I, I didn't want to swim in water, and it's understandably in, in my family, somebody nearly drowned. And uh, my parents told us, uh, our parents told us, never come any, anywhere near water. And we were surrounded with this big lake. We used to go for picnic as a school, I used to see other children swimming and enjoying. For me, I would just look them, look at them. I never went to what uh, to, uh, for swimming in Uganda. I went to when I went to India for further studies. That's when I started learning uh, swimming, um, and I, I did it properly. And uh, I really, I overcame my fear. Yes, of course. Uh, I, I remember I told you the story also uh, growing up in Africa. When I was in Singapore, I must have told you the story. Uh, whereby in, when you go in Africa, in general, most people are afraid of ghosts. I've told you that story before. We are afraid of ghosts. But uh, unfortunately, these are, it looks like uh, also uh, stories, fair tale, you know, legends. Nobody tells us exactly how it looks like. Uh, and for me, I had to find out where I can really face this fear. But still, I'm yet to really see a ghost and describe it for you. <laughs> But still, there's some kind of imagination there. Where, how exactly it looks like? What does it do? So now this kind of become a few unknown there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, but of course, I went to uh, Thailand. I tried to face my fear to look for uh, Ugan meditate and see if I can find one. Uh, but all my disappointment, the monk came traveling, walking at night. And I was meditating in a forest. I thought it was a ghost, but actually later on I found out it was him who, come, who came to pick me up, you know, in the cemetery where I was meditating. So really, uh, I see uh, that something I haven't faced, but, uh, but I'm, I'm yet to face it and really find out for myself what, what are the details of a ghost. Otherwise, I'm now relying on stories. So you can add your stories uh, how, about your fears. Uh, of course, uh, in Uganda here also, when we walk at night, uh, sometimes we find a rope. We find a rope. And now, at, when it's dark, you really feel that it's actually a snake. But actually, when you bring the, the flashlight, only to find is a rope. But me, most people are scared. Yeah, most, uh, I, most people are scared, especially in the evening and uh, at night. Uh, also, sometimes snakes come from one place to another. I mean, Uganda is not full of snakes. But I'm telling you, when you walk in a forest, and uh, anytime you find something like this, look like a snake, most people get afraid. Only when we bring a flashlight and you see, uh, and we, we flash it uh, on the, the object, we find out it's just a rope. But really, people got gripped into the fear. So <laughs> no wonder uh, this uh, there's an acronym I found out on the internet, which said that for uh, fears, false ev evidence appear real. So really, we feel that this is something real, but it's it's false. You know, it's not what it is. So you can add anyway. 
on your list, what are the kinds of fear you have, and you know which one to cultivate and which to overcome. So you need definitely to uh, on, uh, uh, overcome uh, uh, this kind of unwholesome state of mind we call fear. And we're going to talk about this very soon, how to overcome it. So now what are the causes of fear? I've already actually mentioned it uh, from in the Dhammapada. The Dhammapada, uh, there are a few phrases, about five of them uh, pointing to this uh, fear uh, uh, and its causes. It talks about from endearment, from uh, attachment, from uh, greed, from uh, uh, So they gave about four or five statements uh, which are pointing to the cause of fear. So the Buddha is saying, where there's craving, there's fear. And where there's no craving, there's no fear. Mm -hmm. From craving arises fear. Where there's no craving, where is fear? So that's what we find in the scripture. But there's some kind of fear that also arises uh, in our life. Uh, one of them it was mentioned by Tikkinat Han, that actually we seem to get a lot of fear the day we are born. The day we are born, it's a wonderful journey. We all make that journey uh, coming from our mother's womb. And uh, we come to this world, wow, for the first time with a lot of lights. Uh, imagine for the first time to see the lights. Uh, there you, you didn't see light at all. And all of a sudden you see lights when you just come to this world. That must be scary. And that can keep on going actually in our lives. Mm -hmm. Another one is uh, the touch, people touching you, strangers touching you. Even seeing stranger themselves, the, the doctor, we're talking about the doctor, the first doctor who handled you is a stranger, you know. And uh, we know, that, I think we can relate to that. Imagine all people whom you have on your Facebook to show up one day. You'll be definitely afraid of them, but you've been communicating with them. But to show up all one day, you know, 100 people, styling, all 100 people, you... <laughs> They show up to you. Oh, we've been in touch with you. Uh, you're my Facebook friend, you know. Here I am, you know. So we, we may not be uh, so uh, uh, happy to see all of them at once, you know. But this, this child, as soon as they come, with Uncle John, Uncle this and that, they come to see the baby, try to look like this. These are stranger, you know. It must be scary, actually, you know, scary. Mm -hmm. Even the breath we take, yeah, the first breath, that must be scary. Uh, we we don't we, we, we now we are used to it. We are used to it, no problem. But can you imagine the first time how we are greeted here? How much we had to really uh, go through, you know? So now uh, we look at uh, other kind of causes of fear, but not so much from uh, biological fear like uh, this kind of being born and something happened right from the time you you're born, and that can live actually, that can linger around the way you are shocked in the beginning when you just came, it can still linger. But the good news is that whether the cause is at the time of birth or is from craving itself, as the Buddha said, it's the same way we are going to deal with them. We are going to deal with them, the fear, uh, irrespective of its, of its origin, in the same way how the Buddha advised us. So now we look at another kind of fear from uh, now, we, we call it neuroscience. Neuroscience is a branch of science that talks about so many things, but I found out this to be very interesting. It talks about how really human being uh, so much afraid, tracing from the time when we lived in a, a jungle. In a jungle, Those many years ago, maybe 5,000, 50,000, or I don't know exactly the, the one, how many years ago, but there were so many years ago. But the message is very clear, irrespective of how many years ago, the message is clear that there we had a, a simple constitution when we lived in a forest, in a jungle, with our friends, lions and tigers. <laughs> so there are so many back then. Hmm? Now you can find them in the national park. Recently, I was in Rwanda and I visited them. It's just amazing. Our brothers and sisters there in a the jungle. <laughs> so now there, the, the constitution was very simple, not so complicated like now. These days, constitutions are very complicated. <laughs> now there, the, the constitution in a the jungle was very easy. 
to, to eat or to be eaten. That's it. <laughs> so now, imagine living in those kind of situation whereby you have to protect yourself. And in a jungle, uh, you have to pr- protect yourself using fire. Once you have fire, animals don't, animals don't come around fire. They are so afraid. So now we used to um, put fire around ourselves, I mean, uh, sit around fire. And now, of course, there came time for, for gathering food. So part of our friends had to leave and go to gather food, to get firewood. But they didn't have anything. So they are so afraid whether they got to come back or not. And we who are left behind, we are so afraid where, whether our friends are going to come or not. So now we developed a lot of fear since then. Every time the mind, even up to now, according to neuroscience, there's no lions, but the mind, the default of the mind is like that now. The default. That means every time we are looking out for danger. Is there anything dangerous here? Yeah, now COVID even made it worse. <laughs> every time we are worried we are, whether we are going to, we are going to get, get virus and what will happen, which, which kind of... Uh, Variants and all this kind of thing. I mean, uh, this increased our 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 fear. In it. Some people freaked out actually. Even people are really, uh, having fear up to now. Yes, so that's understandable. We need to protect ourselves, you know. But the thing is, uh, when you look at neuroscience, uh, it's interesting to watch that those are many years ago, but still the brain is like that. In other words, what the brain does, it when you have good experiences, it doesn't remember these kind of things, according to the author of that book. And I told you about last time, it's called Buddha's Brain. The good things, the mind doesn't remember in details, but bad things, the, it, the mind remembers so much and so afraid to repeat the same mistake. The mind is afraid to repeat the same mistake because... In the past, when we lived in the jungle, uh, when we saw a lion, the man has to take all the graphic details where the lion was and (laughs) what happened to the grass. So that next time we pass there, we should avoid that place. So that's why up to now, the mind takes um, negative experiences into graphic details so that you are afraid and you are to do the same thing. And also you have aversion towards it. And uh, the good example is when somebody does 100 good things and you ju- they just do only one thing, we, we really, really get so upset. So upset that we even forget other 100 things they've done. It's not fair, but that's what it happened. <laughs> it happens all the time. You do many good things and people forget them. And you do one, one good I mean, people uh, forget them, uh, but one good, bad thing, they don't forget. They remember even details. They add even uh, spice in the bad thing you've done. <laughs> so, so before you know you, 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 where you are, they have exaggerated even the bad thing. Mm-hmm. It's just like making elephant out of a house fly, you know? Yes. So I remember one thing happened here. Uh, somebody lost something and uh, snatched something. He said, oh, this thing was lost. At the temple. I said, no, you are away from the temple. <laughs> so people really uh, put more spices, you know, m- m- more spices. So the person said, no, you are not at the temple. It was over there when you lost this kind of thing. So this is very, very important to remember that uh, when negative experience happens, you have to be more mindful because otherwise you are going to take in the negative information, very negative intention. Uh, and people like the negative aspect of the news, actually, and that's tech, it, because it brings a lot of fear and a lot of maybe excitement and all this kind of thing. So they always uh, distort, they distort uh, the information. Uh, it causes fear and all this kind of thing. So now we have seen the cause. We have seen what's fear. That's the, the, the problem. We've seen the cause of the problem. And uh, now we go to the solution. The solution is very simple. That's the fourth, the third noble truth, to be fearless. 
mm, to be fearless. That's the solution. But how? And the next talk is going to take us how to do it, precisely how to do it. And that will be the fourth noble truth. Mm. The fourth no noble truth is the way mm, out of this problem, out of this um, uh, fear. There are many ways we can approach fear, but we have to use the standard practice. <laughs> we have to use the standard practicing, referring to the discourses the Buddha gave. We're not going to go out of that. Of course, the best way to overcome fear is to face it. The best way to come overcome fear is to face it. Uh, but also we have to be careful. We have to be always mindful the way we face our fear. Otherwise, when we don't have mindfulness and we are approaching our fear, it might be uh, prematurely and it might be premature and you don't have enough tools, and then it can be, you can intensify the fear if you're not more mindful. The good news is when you practice mindfulness, uh, mindfulness brings us to that age uh, where we can open softly to areas which are difficult in our life. That's why mindfulness is very important. And we are going to start with that uh, approach. Using the four foundation of mindfulness, we are going to uh, really see how we can deal with fear. There's also other discourse that we, got, we are going to look at. Vitaka uh, Santana uh, Soto also can help, but let us start with mindfulness. Uh, mindfulness, which is part of the Noble Eightfold Path, but it has to be right mindfulness. Right mindfulness involves a few things, not just being present. Okay, fear, fear, fear. Then it's not going to be addressed, but we need to really look at fear in many areas based on the discourse on the foundation of mindfulness. According to this discourse, it talks about be mindful when the, uh, the presence of the, you know, the state of mind and the absence. So now, when the fear arises, we have to be mindful of the presence of fear at that particular moment. That's the instruction the Buddha gave us. And also we have to be mindful when it's absent. When it's absent, then we have to be mindful of that. Because sometimes we have fear and it's present, but sometimes it's not there. But we should not neglect that moment when we have opposite of fear. What's the opposite of fear? The opposite of fear is courage or fearless, hmm? a buyer. So this mindfulness of the Absence of fear, which is courage, is very important for offsetting, uh, setting up a, a stage for many other uh, mindset, mind states to come. Like freedom fear, which is courage, it will bring gladness. At that moment, you feel glad that, oh, now I'm free from fear. Then that time, gladness is going to arise there is a joy that's going to arise. The minds will be calm because fear tends to agitate our mind. We feel agitated. So now when there's some kind of sense of calmness, then that also one of the benefits of mindful of the absence of fear. Of course, they will be very happy that fear is no longer there and so on and on. And also we'll be able to understand later on, seeing things as they really are. So really that one is very important according to the discourse. But let's continue with the presence of fear. Fears around. Hmm? Now fears around, uh, being aversive to the present danger, fear is going to arise. And now we have to process it according to the Buddha. We look at the conditions for the fear to arise. I've already told you the condition for fear to arise uh, is craving. Actually, look at the fear of, uh, let's say, death. Why are you afraid to die? <laughs> Maybe you are attached to <laughs> your body, <laughs> to your life, isn't it? <laughs> so really, it's not just that everybody... Okay, fear of death also can be fear of unknown. Actually, uh, if we know exactly, precisely what happened one second after death, Two seconds, one minute, two minutes, which if we know exactly, then there's no problem, you know? <laughs> but nobody knows what happened after a second, you know? 
So, I mean, we could be fine if we know after one week what happens. But for me, I would be interested from second one, micro second, what happened after you, you, you kaput. Uh, that we no fear of death will be out of the window, actually. But nobody knows, no clue, nobody has a clue. <laughs> so, uh, we, we, of course, we have to resort to the Buddhist seeing that okay death is like sunrise and sunset uganda when the sunrise you know that the sun is setting somewhere and the other way around so we know that as soon as we die we are reborn for that from a uh, from buddha's teaching that's oh, that's okay but does that stop us from being afraid of fear Do we know we are reborn many many times you know? but still we'll be afraid because uh, even when we know from a theoretical theoretical part of background, but still there's a fear of attached of your life, you know, of your life is going to go, you're not going to have it anymore. And also other people, you, you're afraid to be dead, other people to be uh, dead also, because you're attached to them. Also, you, or you don't know what's going to happen after they, they, they die. So it's, it's feeds into the system. <laughs> it feeds into the system. Okay. Uh, the message is very clear here. We should know the conditions, um, be mindful actually of the cause and condition of fear. Once we know cause and condition of fear, then fear is losing its strength. You know, So then we are practicing what the Buddha taught about mindfulness. Now, we continue on uh, to see the, the, what are conditions of the arising of fear, what are the condition for the for the removal? The condition for the removal, of course, when you remove a craving, then there will be no fear. But this is also another third condition we need to know from mindfulness point of view. So we need to do the condition for non-arising of fear completely for the rest of your life. That one you need to attain at least that third level of enlightenment. Once you attain, third, if you don't want to live with fear, just work on your, your third level of enlightenment. You'll be good. <laughs> you will not have fear of going to Uganda, fear of going to Antarctica, fear of this, <laughs> because you have removed the roots. So that's very clear. Still, we are with this mindfulness. So we continue on with mindfulness practice again. The Buddha is telling us to be mindful of the arising of fear. When the fear arises, be mindful when it's arising. Be mindful when it's passing away. Be mindfulness, when, uh, what we call anicca. Hmm? This is called anicca, be mindfulness. The anicca the anicca part of the uh, state of mind called fear. So we need to be mindful of the arising and the passing out of fear. We need to be mindful of other things the Buddha talked about, like dukkha, hmm? suffering. We know when fear arises, uh, it brings a lot of suffering. So we need also to be mindful of dukkha. We need to, so to be mindful of the conditioned nature of or selfless nature of that mind state. Actually, when you look at that uh, state of mind, uh, and that's called anatta, uh, you look at it, it just comes due to causes and conditions. Mm? Due to anything that comes due to causes and condition, anything's changing, it's selfless. We know that, of course. But even more important, we have to really go to another stage of mindfulness, which is really very important, uh, is not clinging. This is in the discourse, not clinging on to anything in this world. In this mind-body mind processes, which is now fears arising in our mind, in our thoughts, we should not cling on to it as this is my fear, this is mine. I'm a fearless person and identify ourselves with this fear. So we don't need to cling on to it. All those steps that we're following is in the discourse and that's how to be and working on your fear, to be free from fear. So there are a few steps there, all of them pertain to mindfulness. So now you have a few tools there, a few tools to deal with fear. But there's other things that we need to discuss also. We need to use another discourse. Uh, we have to make a short excursion 
into a discourse called Vitaka Santana Sutta in Majima Nikaya, where the Buddha is telling us uh, how to deal with destructive thoughts, you know, obsessive thoughts. Because normally fear, we identify ourselves with fear. That's why the last step in mindfulness is non-clinging to fear. Don't cling on to fear as this mind is myself. And all. Because most of us, we identify ourselves with emotions anyway. And fear is strong emotion. So now, uh, here in the discourse, again, when you don't have enough mindfulness, uh, when you don't have enough mindfulness, uh, of course, this discourse also needs some level of mindfulness, but uh, in a very progressive way, whereby you, you decided to do what exactly Buddha said. In the first instance, we need to substitute. We substitute the opposite of fear, which is courage with fear. That one requires really taking a look at your life and say, like for me, for, 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 the, for, for water, I say no. Everybody swims. I don't see them drowning. <laughs> Though when I went to water, I just sunk like a rod. <laughs> I just like a metal, you know. I don't know why we... <laughs> We just in the water. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know heavy bones, whatever it is. So for me, every time I go there, I just sink to the bottom, you know. And then I say, I see other people. They were just swimming. They are just floating. Westerners reading a book while swimming on a swimming pool. Even I don't think even actually now I can do it. Anyway, I'm a monk. I cannot do it. But anyway, so the thing is, uh, we I I really admired people who are swimming. They were just reading a novel on a swimming pool. Just this. And just reading then. <laughs> For me, I had to struggle a lot. But anyway, I had to face my fear and really I became a good swimmer. Actually. So this is really my courage. I, what I did is actually a substitution method. I didn't know the Buddhism very well back then, but what I did is to substitute and have courage. But I want to say mindfulness courage because uh, I don't want unwise courage. Right? I want something like wisdom, courageous yeah, skillful courage. Well, I think I should call it like that. Uh, wholesome courage, skillful, wholesome courage also, because there might be courage when you say yes for the sake of courage. I need to be courageous, courageous, and then you really mess up, you know. <laughs> yes, but really be mindful as you approach the substitution method to really uh, become um, uh, courageous to face situations in your life. So as I told you, every step here will require some level of mindfulness. Be mindful as you're applying courage to face your situation. If you're mindful, then you're going to face your situation uh, in a very soft and uh, an organic way. In op uh, you open slowly by slowly, uh, slowly by slowly. And uh, like for me swimming, I could start a little bit, start flutter, then you go like this. But if I have courage, I just drop my, myself in water, <laughs> in a swimming pool, uh, because I, I had courage is very good to substitute for fear, then uh, I might really actually face problems, you know, because uh, I'm just going there for the sake of courage. But here I'm talking about mindfulness of courage, where you open softly, uh, slowly by slowly, and really uh, have courage to move forward, slowly by slowly. Mm -hmm. Slowly by slowly, so you, you try something in bits, step by step, and then you can overcome your kind of fear. Another kind of method, uh, and again, it follows Vitaka Sadhana Sutta, require mindfulness reflection. You reflect mindfully that, okay, for the next last few years, I've been afraid of ABC, mm -hmm. and it's bringing me suffering. So once you reflect like this, <clears throat> once you have some kind of reflection and you connect this state of mind with suffering, with pain, with worries, with other things that comes, you say, no, I've had enough. Let me be free from it. So it will give you courage to be free from it. Also, we can reflect along those lines, the opposites of fear, which is courage, and say, wow, when I'm courageous, I feel more happiness. I feel more happiness. So then that can help you to overcome 
or to be free from fear. This is more of reflection, what, ha what happens when you have that mind state. Last time I was teaching in Singapore, I was talking about something different. Uh, I, I, and I gave this example, but I might, uh, it bears repeating this example, is when you're driving uh, on a highway, uh, and uh, by the way, in, in Singapore, I don't know whether you have highways, <laughs> but anyway, on a road, and you say traffic uh, police, traffic police, and you know that these traffic police, they give tickets, uh, very expensive tickets. As you're driving and you see the policeman, uh, and then you reflect, you have to reflect. You don't just keep on driving, you reflect. Ah, with speed I'm not driving, maybe 60, 80. Ah, when I continue, I'm going to get a ticket. What should I do? I should now reduce from 80 to 60 to 40. Oh, the speed limit is 30, I should go to 30, not 80. So the same thing as you are racing into your fear, uh, you you can kind of mindfully reflect, you know, whenever I have fear, it doesn't bring me peace. It brings me more pain, more worry, more uptight. And now I'm going to do something to reduce or remove uh, my fear. And of course, you reflect on the opposite. When I have courage, what happened? I live my life very well, very happily. So that will motivate you to really uh, be free from fear. And it's called mindfulness reflection. The other one is more of substituting the opposite. This is reflecting. Now, another thing that I found out very helpful, again, I go on this, this course, is to redirect your mind from the state of mind called fear to something wholesome. And I did it when I was in Thailand, when I'm, I was afraid of the, the ghost, uh, meditating. You turn your mind to something else, either discourse, the Buddha this time uh, taught uh, what we call Metta Sutta, loving kindness. You can practice loving kindness. May I be happy, may I be peaceful, may I be free from fear. So this kind of returning, moving your mind from uh, fear and bring it something else is very, very, very important. It You can be mindful of something else, let's say, be, come back to the breath. You can just become aware now of the breath as fears are rising. Then uh, as you have practiced mindfulness of breathing, or mindfulness of the body, or really doing something else, for a short time, you, you'll be surprised how fear loses its grip. So this is one thing that the Buddha recommended in Vitaka Santana Sutta. For me, always I want to relate things to the day life because in day life I see this happening a lot. When I'm talking with somebody, two people talking, five minutes, another person, the third person comes in and interrupt me. And uh, now I, I redirect my mind to this person. We talked for five minutes, two, 10 minutes. It's amazing after 10 minutes, this person will go and then come back to the person I've been talking to. I always ask this person, not all the time actually, but sometimes I say, what have we been talking about? I've lost the storyline. Totally the storyline the story is lost. Mm -hmm. Is lost. I think if you review your life, this may, might have happened to you when you're talking at somebody and you are interrupted and then you come back, then you are not the same. Uh, in other words, you don't remember all the detail where you stopped. But of course, this is, has a biological reasoning uh, behind this redirecting your mind, uh, whereby when you are under fear, the body becomes so tense, very tense, and the nervous system becomes so tense. That kind of situation, in biology, we call it uh, sympathetic nervous uh, sympath sympathetic nervous uh, system. Huh? So you are in that system whereby everybody is tensed when you have fear. But actually by spending more time doing something else, in other words, putting your mind somewhere, you cross to the parasympathetic nervous system. And that side of the story is there's no stress, 
and everything come back to normal, like the blood, the heartbeat, and all this kind of thing. So really, it has a biological, biological explanation why we should really shift our mind to something else. Of course, I gave you my experience of talking to somebody uh, that uh, the mind kind of forget the details where you are, but actually when you look at what happened to our body, uh, what uh, when you shift our mind something else, really uh, it helps you to calm down and it helps you to, uh, like for the, uh, for the mindset to, to subside because now you're calm. Normally fear will kick in so many things. Uh, blood will be racing very fast, heartbeat uh, stating also going very fast, breathing very fast. Everything starts to be very fast when fear comes. But by sidestepping it for a while, even if for a few minutes, everything comes back to normal. That can help to appease the situation. And that's the discourse the Buddha gave. Another one is more of looking at the cause of fear. And I've already told you the cause, so we don't have to go further in that. I told you the cause of fear is craving. So then once you find out this is the cause, then you can deal with it. But the fifth one, according to the discourse, is really making a strong resolve so that fear doesn't become your master and you, don't, you become a puppet. You want to be the opposite. Fear should be a servant, not a master. This really requires to make a, a strong resolve every morning. Uh, every morning you wake up, you, re you reflect that I'm not going to be overcome by fear. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to face my fear. In any way you want to make that strong resolution, we call it aditana. Aditana. Aditana to make a strong resolve every day. Because, you know, fear can debilitate you. Fear can debilitate you and you can't do anything. I remember one time I was in, 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 in West Virginia. Somebody told me that there's a, a bear always the bear always coming, and uh, I said, no, there's no bear here. For the three years I stayed there, there was no bear. One time I saw one. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I thought it was a dog, but actually it turned out to be a bear. A bear. I'm telling you. I just ran to my kuti, and uh, that's uh, the way how I dealt with the uh, facing to, face to face with the bear. But since then, I, was, I became very careful. As, <laughs> as I was going the same place, I always remember that nasty experience of facing a bear, which I thought it was a dog. Yeah, so then uh, I say, okay, and this I'm not going to change my kuti because my kuti was next to the where the bear came. So every morning I would really reflect, I'm, I'm going to face my fear whenever uh, I have fear of the bear, bears, it was a black bear. I'm going to face my fear. I'm going to be, I'm going to be courageous. I'm not going to let fear to to take over, to overtake me. <laughs> so sometimes our fear overtakes us, you know. So that's what we need to do. Uh, already you have so many tools at the moment. More tools are there if you follow the Noble Eightfold Path, actually. If you follow the Noble Eightfold Path, more, again, uh, those tools will help you, uh, right understanding, understanding what's fear, having the right thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, and also that will help you to overcome fear. We know that when we have our right action, we won't be afraid, you know, when our actions are right, like we keep the fire precept, then there's no need to fear because you're not stealing, you're not killing, you know. So all those kind of things can also help you. Even in your right speech, when you, are, you always follow right speech, you're not be afraid that you, do, you are not afraid that one day they'll catch you lying and not telling the truth. So you're not afraid. You, you, you tell the truth, you, you, you speak with kindness, you speak harmoniously and meaningfully. So that also can help you to overcome any fear about speaking because your speech is following the Buddha's teaching, including uh, things like livelihood. If you have the right livelihood, you are not manufacturing bombs, you are, you are living a decent livelihood with mindfulness and understanding and all these kind of things. So that also can, helps. I've all told you mindfulness helps also, which I've already explained, effort. You, you apply your efforts to prevent and overcome fear. And you also apply the effort to, main, to develop courage and maintain it. So also you can see the number for path is a tool that you can use to be free from fear. And lastly, is the right concentration. We know that 
when we are meditating and we reach concentration, we overcome some, at least on a temporary basis, we overcome the five hindrances, at least at that time. Uh, we have uh, no fear in that moment because at least the root of fear, which is greed, it's appeased for those moments. So even concentration, when a, to the extent that mind is concentrated, uh, and that means the five uh, hindrances are at least suspended for a short time, then at that moment, we don't have fear, at least that moment. But then the mind is not concentrated, then is kind of uh, invaded by unwholesome states of mind, then some, some fear in one form or fashion is going to arise. You have so many tools ranging from right, uh, Noble Eightfold Path, Vitakan Santana Sutta, Five Methods, and Mindfulness itself in more details. So uh, with that, I feel that once you have all these tools under your belt, you have all the ways how to overcome fear, uh, then you're going to be free from fear to the extent you can apply those methods. So thank you very much for listening. And may you be free from fear. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bhante. You are welcome. Some questions. Yes. Some answers. Uh, the first question is, how do we catch fear before the fear arises? Ah, how do we catch? <laughs> the best way to catch uh, fear, uh, fear before it arises, be a person who practice mindfulness 100%. Then you'll be able to catch. But if you are not practicing mindfulness 100%, hmm, so now maybe you are practicing mindfulness uh, 10%. Some form of fear will come, but you'll be able to see it because you are, your mind is present. You know, mindfulness is a state of mind, uh, which means two things. One is to recollect from the past. That's the tradition meaning. But actually, the, the, when the Buddha came to the scene, it means seeing what is arising in the present moment. So now that's how to catch it. The answer is to be mindful and to be wise. <laughs> but if you are forgetful and you don't have wisdom, Wisdom to see is to see details because you need both. You need mindfulness to see what's happening like a mirror. That, that, that's what mirrors do. They show what's happening, isn't it? So now also you need to wisdom to understand details because some fear can come and you, uh, can come and you know it, but you may forget uh, the details, how it looks like uh, in your body, how in your mind. That's why it's very important to really investigate and be mindful how, how fear affects your mind how it affects your body, so that next time it comes, you're more familiar with it. So the answer to your question is to cultivate mindfulness continually, daily practice, so that when and have some unwholesome states of mind, like fear comes, you are able to see it as it comes. Because if you're not mindful, that means you're forgetful. And when fear comes, it will hijack you. <laughs> it will hijack you. And many other mind states actually, not only fear, we have so many other mind states that hijack us. You know? So it will hijack you and then it will, uh, it will grip your mind and then it will take a while, uh, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, and then, eh, wow, this fear really, uh, it, it took me for a ride, you know? But as you practice mindfulness, you can see it coming, and even if it comes, it can stay for uh, a few minutes, uh, moments, and then you're able to say, oh, this fear. See, fear, I see you, this fear. <laughs> Not confusing it with something else. <laughs> so then you can now apply these tools. To uh, The first technique is more effective, mindful of the presence. So now uh, it's not going to happen just uh, immediately. So the more you practice mindfulness, the more it becomes better. So one moment of mindfulness, of there's a mindfulness of breath, mindfulness of, uh, of uh, other things. That, that's where you train mindfulness and picks up so that when you're mindful of other things, when fear also comes, you feel in the body. Oh, the body is agitated. The mind is, is not calm. Is, 
then you know oh, fear has raised fear has raised it raised its its ugly head then you start applying these methods and find out how you can deal with the fear mindfulness of the conditions then you ask yourself how did i end up here when fear is now is present what could have caused it is it because i don't know is it because of greed is it because of aversion is it because of fear itself? Because also fear can cause fear. You're afraid of fear about fear about fear. So once you track the cause, then you say, okay, let me address the cause. Now, what am I going to use? Is it, am I going to do the substitution method? I can start sending loving kindness, unless it's fear of the interview, and say, okay, let me send loving kindness to, the somebody, to somebody who is going to interview me. Maybe fear of this, then you try to find out what, you know. So really, mindfulness and wisdom is the way. That's why I'm about using mindfulness and wisdom to overcome fear. That's how to do it. Thank you, Bante. But don't think that every time you be catching it, yeah, catching ideas is not about catching. It's about understanding it. That's why I brought in the, 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 the Noble Eight for Path, because the Noble Eight for Path is right understanding. It's not catching and throw it away. No, it's about understanding our mind, how to function. You know, yeah, we are not catchers. We catch this and catch this. Okay, I've caught it. I've caught. No, it's about really the entire paradigm shift on how to deal with emotions. Actually, yeah, and catching is just one of them. <laughs> and there will be understanding its nature, its conditions. <laughs> it's not catch and go. <laughs> yes, so it's about really. Uh, be f- being free. Yeah, and catching is one of the many other ways to really get uh, started. Okay, thank you very okay, much. We have uh, five more questions for you. So oh, five, five. Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. continue. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe you can keep some short. Uh, how okay. does one overcome fear of darkness? For example, how does one overcome fear of noise when one is alone at night? At night, always work with the flashlights. <laughs> so, fear of darkness, okay. Yeah, fear of darkness. Walk with a flashlight. If it's your it's your home, put some security light outside. Uh, what else? Fear of something. I had darkness. What else? A fear of noise when one noise? is alone at night. Noise. Fear of noise when one is put alone e- at night. Put, put, put ear plugs for the noise. Put ear. Ear plugs, if it's too much noise, you put ear plugs. There are two kinds of ear plugs. One you buy in a supermarket, another one mindfulness ear plugs, whereby when noise comes, you become mindful of hearing, hearing, hearing. And that, those are cheaper ones, actually. Whenever noise comes, you just become mindful of hearing. Actually, noise can pre- bring us to the present moment. Yeah, so you don't just become afraid of it. You just make it as an object of meditation. And then, or is it rising, staying the same, so you become more mindful. And then fear of alone, alone, there's a difference between loneliness and, and aloneness. Yeah, loneliness is an emotion, loneliness, you know, but alone, uh, you're being fear of alone, get some friends. Get some friends and <laughs> loneliness is something else, whereby uh, it's an emotion, whereby you, even when you are with people, you, you feel that loneliness, you know. But uh, if it's being alone, again, it's the same mindfulness. You are born alone, you live alone, you die alone. <laughs> so then uh, get some friends and be with each other. And, but, but you said at night, yeah. you always try to yeah, travel with buddies. Travel with buddies. Fear of noise uh, at night. Yeah, at night is a noise I'm telling you about be, turning to mindfulness. Yeah, but when it's noise, but you talk about alone. Alone. Is that yeah. It? Noise. Yeah, alone. Alone. Yeah. At night. Yeah. So oh, oh, this is a little bit uh, mixed. I don't know. Yeah. Fear of noise alone. Yeah, when one is alone at night, that means when you hear something and you are alone, you don't know. What ah, then you think there's a line coming. No, you 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 always tell somebody. You work with somebody else. You, uh, that will feel confidence. You say, Sister Ali, uh, whenever I pass this place, I, I, I hear noise and I'm afraid. Then, first, I told you the method be mindful of the noise. Then, the, you won't need Sister Ali. But if uh, it still is continuing, go get a buddy. You, you always say, Let's go. Uh, if mindfulness is not working at the moment, 
So let's go until man, when you travel with Sister Eileen and the noise comes, you feel there's somebody else at least. You're not going to be eaten by a certain animal or whatever. But then still you continue with your mindfulness. It will work slowly by slowly until even when you pass that noise, you won't interpret it for something else. Another question. Thank you, Vanti. Which is a worse reaction to fear, flight or fight? All of them. <laughs> All of them, but flight will be, will be better than fight because you fight, you, you lose both. <laughs> when you fight, good luck if you win. <laughs> so, so for me, flight is safe. In fact, dogs do that. They fly and then they put their tail behind and they just, <laughs> they just run away, you know. But fight, you are going to lose blood and all this kind of thing. All of them actually are unskillful because it's even a third of three Fs actually. Fight, uh, then uh, flight, or freeze. All of them are mechanisms we use when we are faced with a lot of danger. All of them, they're unso unwholesome because it's a man reacting in different ways. You know, fight, uh, it's aggressiveness, it's desire. And uh, fright is aversion and fear is ignorance. You know, we cannot say this is the worst or the other one because we look at what are the mind states that make you freeze. You really uh, freeze because you are ignorant. You ignore something and freeze. You are mobile, immobile. But fight is you, you desire to destroy, destroy something. And that is in a way. And flight is fear and uh, aversion. So all of them being motivated by an unwholesome state of mind, I cannot prefer one or the other, but if I am um, to do something for me, I would choose either to fight, I mean, to, to, uh, to fly, to, to run away from danger, just like I did for the, the, for the bear, you know? But if I'm to fight a bear and clear it away from Bavana society, <laughs> not good. And if I'm to freeze and it will eat me. So if you are telling me what I would do, <laughs> I had to fight because that I got a safer place, you know. Yeah, but I cannot recommend that one is better. Than, I mean, is wholesome. All of them are wholesome uh, because they are motivated by mindsets behind it for, for our survival. These are things for our survival. They are good. We we survive that way. But one life should not be run on those kind of things. Okay, another question. I think that's the yes. last one. The yeah. last question. So which uh, no. Uh, does a stream enterer experience fear? When would yes. the condition? Yes. Yes. Okay. When <laughs> yes, would... yes. But, but not the other, like us. At least yeah, it's not so much. Okay. It's when so, would... There is always fear, but it's not the same fear we have before stream entry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a this is yes. a, very, very, a big attainment. The works, as I, I mentioned, up to the third level of enlightenment. Even the second level, it will be some fear. But uh, once you really attain the third level of enlightenment, you remove craving, uh, greed, which is a motivation for fear. Those people will not have the fear that we experience. So, we'll continue on the part B. Yeah, the but, continuing the question is when would be the condition of uh, when would the condition of fear be eradicated from a habitual tendency? Example: the fear of uh, a snake or a cockroach. That one is, I mentioned it, I think also, is that why would you be afraid of a cockroach? <laughs> habitual tendency. Yeah, habitual thing. And uh, there's imaginary fear, that's ignorance, there's aversion to what it is, there's greed. And so all those things after third level of anatomy, that, that will go. Yes, but you have to really uh, know that uh, even on other levels, uh, so long as the level of anatomy, it's not the same kind of fear that grips us when you have not attained that level. Those people will have it, but not the, the, with the intensity that, that we have, because most of the defilement have been eradicated. There is only a few left. So then uh, we have to uh, know that it will be erased, uh, be free from fear when we we are uh, attained the third level of energy. because those habitual uh, fears also they are motivated by man states it, it has to be either fear it has to be uh, delusion 
It has to be uh, aversion. It has to be greed. But most of the time, aversion. And aversion, ill will, uh, aversion is again eradicated at the third level of enlightenment. Second level is attenuated. It just decreased. So most of the fear is aversion towards something, actually. Oh, this is very ugly. I don't like the way it looks like. <laughs> it had, so it's mostly aversion. So once aversion goes out of the window, so we'll be fine. Thank you, Bhante. Second last question. Bhante, mm -hmm. what can a mother do when, the, when she worries a lot about the people her child associates with? Not that they are bad people, but they are people with controversial views. As a mom, she <laughs> finds that she has lost a lot of influence on her child now that the child is in her 20s. You see, uh, these are things that uh, you have to advise. Mm -hmm. You have to advise for uh, this person to join uh, the Sangha. People have good views. As parents, you just have to advise. But parents choose, well, I mean, children have to choose. The, the, uh, we, we advise, in other words, for our role, we do our best to advise them to find the good people. You identify them, but if, if somebody in their twenties that means they can decide, so you you keep on advising. Don't give up advising them, but how to make decisions? Uh, children at that age they, they always make these decisions that goes against our our intentions and all this kind of thing. So my advice to you is just keep on advising them and do your best. And if they cannot hear you, you go through another person, you go through their best friend, you keep on finding out some other people who speak to your child and they can listen. Because sometimes as when we have our children, uh, we've been advising them so, for so many years. And when they hear another advice, they say, oh, here it comes again. So they put earplugs. To, even to your good advice. So what I would advise you is uh, to, uh, to find uh, a few other people who are sending the same message. If the Ajahn Brahm comes, if uh, another person, you address the same question. If another, uh, their uncle comes, you address the same thing. Can you be, if they be their best friend, uh, Bante Buddha director comes. Can you meet my friend, my, my, my son and advise the, and talk about you choose the topic, Bante, can you talk about the uh, Buddha's approach to good friends and bad friends? So, I mean, you don't tell the monk, please do this and this on your behalf. You just ask the monk, please, this topic on how to join bad companies and good companies, uh, what did the, the Buddha say? You, you ask during a Q&A, you know, Q&A, when a monk comes, and then you make sure that the, the, your, your, your child attends that talk. And then that person can hear it from other, other, other voice, you know. But if it's you all the time, all the time, let alone they just don't listen. They just do what they, what they want. So choose as many other people sending the same message. And uh, then you can advise. You know the saying that you can take a horse to water, but you cannot make it drink? We can advise the children, but making their choices Ultimately, they have their life and they all their karma. You don't know why they're choosing that. I don't know. Basically, I give an example myself. I went to Thailand and I saw these monks from Thailand. They influenced me to become a Buddhist and all this. So now, if my really uncle was there or my father, they would both go against my, my, my choices. And if they do go against my choices, I would not become a monk. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So sometimes, uh, I mean, from the perspective of my parents, me associating with the monks in Thailand and uh, leading to where I am now, it was bad news for them. <laughs> but for me, I knew that I'm mature enough and I had tried all other things and they were not answering my questions and I associated with the monks. And this is what I am now. Can you imagine if my parents said, no, no, no. Because my parents are Roman Catholic. They go to the Pope Knights and they, 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 they're really staunch Catholics. They will really faint if they really were, if they were in India. <laughs> when they saw what I was doing, they will really faint. <laughs> so now I chose my life and it's a perfect one for me, but it's not perfect for them. So that's why I say that you can advise, do your best. At least 
you can clear your mind that you did your best. That's all what I can say. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you, Bante. Last question, Bante. In Majima Nikaya 4, the Buddha describes mm. how he overcame fear and dread while he was practicing in scary places. He said that mm. whatever posture he was in, like walking, what is it? Yes. Like walking, he will continue to walk with the fear until the fear is subdued instead of standing mm. or sitting down. In other words, mm. not change his posture. Can Bante please mm. explain how this works? Thank you. I've already talked about that. That's called resolution. Make a strong resolve. You remember in Vitaka Santana Sutta? Uh, I say that every time you make a strong decision, uh, it, it, you make a strong, you make a determination as soon as you wake up, make a strong this, this, uh, determination. During the day. That message, we should do, really uh, know that uh, we should not read this discourse and then do exactly what it is. Imagine you are going to Jalong you've left BF and fear comes and you stay there for the whole day standing. That's not the message. <laughs> the message is clear, make a strong determination. That's what it is. Can you imagine Sister Eileen, you stay there standing position all the day. We, BF call, where are you? Oh, fe fe I was overcome by fear in Geelong and I'm still here. <laughs> oh, Sister Eileen, come for lunch. No, 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 fear is still around. I'm not going to walk, no, no, no. So yes, these things are, are very good. That suit I know, Bear Barra suit. Uh, and sometimes whenever I have time, I refer to it when I give that method of make a strong resolve it's about making a strong resolve but we may not practice the way the bodhisattva was practicing it and stay there imagine it can be even in the middle of the road you're crossing bf road <laughs> going to the opposite side and then it grabs you fear of something in the middle of the road and you say okay, i'm not going to walk <laughs> i'm not going to cross the road until fear has... no no so the message here is very simple make a strong determination. It may not be that uh, you are going to see, uh, you may not, let's say for instance, come when you're sitting, you may be able to stand, you may be able to stand, but still making it that determination. But for me, uh, taking things very literally, and then you sit for almost the entire day until uh, uh, fear goes. <laughs> yeah, so I think you may not do that. And uh, for me, I used to practice like that, actually, uh, uh, like uh, by a different injection by the Buddha. He talks about monks, or I think it's a commentary where monks uh, were not mindful, and they would, they would, when they do something and they found out they were mindful, they were not mindful, they would go do it again and, uh, until they become mindful. And also they go for peanut butter, they put water in the mouth so that they don't talk. So in, when I was a young monk, if I, I, I opened the door and I found out I opened it unmindfully, I would go back. <laughs> I would go back and then walk again and, until I'm aware that I'm opening the door. So I've done such things literally. But for me, I'll continue to be having the strong determination, but I won't be... Uh, in one place until fear goes. I mean, if it's like meditation, retreat, I can do that because I'm in that mode. I'm, I'm not functioning in their life. I could do that and sit as long as I can. I'm, I'm not going to stand till this happens. Uh, but if you are living in their life, it may not happen. And you have just have to have that strong determination that I'm going to overcome it. Even when I'm walking, let me overcome it. But if it's retreat setting, you have a lot of time at your time. I mean, it's sitting, walking, sitting, walking, eating. You can do that. I'm going to stand here and you try your best to see that it goes out in posture. But I will not do it in their life in one place and people are going to call you to have lunch and say, no, please. I'm still figuring out my fear. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that. Does that make sense? Yes, because for me, look at the message of that suit having a strong determination. It's about having strong determination. Thank you, Bante. Sad, okay, sad, 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 sad. yes, you're welcome.
Dante, can we share now, merits? Okay. I'm going to say. Okay. Chatarudamawantanti, <laughs> Padivata Sabbudan Vavina, Sabadaman Vavina, Sabasangan Vavina, Sadaso Tiva want to tea. Imina Punya Kamina, Mami Bala Samagamo, Satam Samagamo, to Yavani Bakia. You can say Idame Yatina Hotu, Sikita Hotu Yatayo. Idame Yatina. Can repeat Idame Idame to Sukita Hotu Yata. Idame Yatina Hotu 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 Sukita Hotu Yata. Sadu, 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 Sadu. Thanks again. Yes, I got that to you. Thank you, Bante. You are welcome. Thank you, Bante. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome.